Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel, 3 o'clock block. And uh, today we're doing Code Green at this block. And I'm your visiting host. Your real host is Howard Wig, energy analyst with the State Energy Office. And we're talking together about the new energy conservation code, a whole new ball game. And uh, Howard and I met in the passage uh, last Tuesday at the Verge Conference, and he was telling me about this, and I got film of it, and it, was, it sounded really great and high news. This is high news. What happened, Howard? After all these years, finally she is a reality, this new code yep. of yours. You wouldn't believe it, but government move slowly. I believe it. I believe yep. it. Yeah. So the deal is there are national codes put out by the International Codes Council, like the plumbing code, the fire code, the seismic code, and they're updated every three years. And theoretically, the states follow right along every three years. Had we been able to do the update every three years, the state would be tens of millions of dollars richer for not having imported oil and having keeping dollars in the people's, in people's pockets. It's an efficiency question, the right? Efficiency question, yeah. It would have saved millions and millions and millions Tens of dollars. Tens of millions. So of how dollars. come we didn't uh, upgrade our code the way other states were upgrading their codes? Because the State Building Code Council, and it's all of us code types, assemble once a month, and we modify the code, give news on the code, and so forth. And we were created by the legislature, 2007 and describe what the council was to do. And then there was appropriated an amount of X to hire an executive and an assistant so that they could plow through all of the Byzantine bureaucracy that is involved in creating a new law. The then governor, who shall remain nameless, appropriated zero. So we went back to her, had in hand the next year, zero. So then comes another governor, had in hand, governor, it says right here, you get an appropriation, zero, 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 from 2007 to the present. So all of us sitting around that table have a lot of other things to do, and getting through what's called the administrative rule process is very, oh, very, sure. very The Administrative um, Procedures Act applies to all of this yes. then. Makes it more difficult yet. It is incredibly cumbersome. Yeah. And if you were a governor, first thing I'd do is sit down with you and slash that thing about in a third. Eliminate many, many, many steps. You mean the Administrative Procedures yes. Routine? Yes, yes. Let me, let me assure you, if I were governor, I would meet with you and I would do that, Howard. Okay. That's good. We, yeah. we, we, that, yeah. That's a deal. Yeah. So the existing code dates back to 2006. And this is a technological matter. You know Moore's Law. You know how rapidly technology is changing. And especially a lot of the building technologies are changing. The idea of a code is to update, 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 and keep up with those new, more efficient technologies. And we didn't. We were stuck back in 2006. So, so the longer you wait, you, logarithmically, it's mm -hmm. more, more, more difficult yeah. to make the change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So we had to wait all that time. And had we been able to keep up with a three-year process, we would have had increasingly, increasingly, increasingly stringent energy code, which would have been passed to the counties, and people would have updated, 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 gotten better and better and better. So now it's been adopted. Mm -hmm. And I want to go through your slides. I yeah. want you to go through your slides. But I want to ask you one question before. Mm -hmm. The process that, that prevented us from keeping current on these three-year iterations, mm -hmm. uh, with, you know, the National mm -hmm. Conservation Code. And it wasn't just me. It was all codes, by the way. All codes. Yeah. The process that, that, that kept us behind, that, mm -hmm. that uh, limited our ability to keep up, was that process is still in place. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if this was adopted here in uh, 2017, 
in by 2020 will be up for another update mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and my guess howard and this is probably the bottom line of the show mm -hmm. is the same thing is going to happen again isn't it no because we got so frustrated at the building code council that in the last couple of meetings we agreed no more administrative rules there's we checked the law and we have our attorney general sitting there right at the table with us and she said, no, you do not have to go through the administrative rule so we can make our amendment, propose our code at the council level and shoot it directly to the counties because the counties are the, where the rubber meets the road. That's where the architects and engineers submit their plans for a new building or a new home. Mm, that's great or news. That's great so this won't happen again. The heck with administrative What rules. about the funding issue you raised? Uh, still, we keep hunting for funding from this source, that source, because we can't get it from the legislature. Oh, they, uh, they s say, yes, 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 yes. And then I know you're going to find this hard to believe, but right at the last minute, as the last three days of the session, somehow it disappeared. Huh. I actually don't, don't find that hard to believe at all. Oh, oh. It's just the way life mm -hmm. is in the mm -hmm. square building. Mm -hmm. So why don't we go through some of your slides. We're prepared yep. to yep. do that, and why don't mm -hmm. you... Uh, present a uh, subject to my interruption. Sure, sure. Well, you, you, it'll be very, very welcome because you shed new light on this. Okay, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, this is, yep, I talked about all this. Next slide. Next slide. We're going to catch up here. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's all about catching up. Yep. So, because we've waited so long, a new building or a new home built today will be 30 30, up to 33% more efficient than a home built for 2006. And the magic of a energy code is that in year one, say 5,000 buildings and homes were built, you save your 33% on all of them but those buildings don't go away. If you're projecting for a 20-year period, you get year one, year two, year three, year four, year five. You get 20 years savings out of that one building. But there's more. The next year, you get another cohort of new buildings, and they measure the savings for 19 years. And in 18 years, 17 years, it's called cumulative savings. And the end result is a savings of over one billion dollars, and that is conservative. That's a great. That's a great story. Yeah. It's great news. So happy yeah. that this happened. Mm -hmm. And the state's energy goal is a hundred percent clean energy by the year 2045. Everybody thinks photovoltaics, photovoltaics. That's one end of the equation. The other is decrease, 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 decrease the amount of energy we're using in the first place. And well, that, to the extent you effect. decrease the amount mm -hmm. of energy you're using in the first place by yeah. reason of this code mm -hmm. efficiency, it means you don't have to put as much solar on. Precisely. I mean, substantially less. Precisely. Great news. Yeah. So we can go to the next slide. Okay, now the really good news is that I sit on the national code board as well as the state code board and I and a bunch of my buddies up there in D.C. managed to get a whole new climate zone called the Tropical Climate Zone into the National Code, which allows us to design buildings any old way we want to. We no longer have to conform to what's good for Minnesota. So now at the res there's residential and commercial components at the residential level the tropical code allows single wall construction. You don't have to have insulation on your walls. I mean, who heard of single wall construction? I grew up with it. I turned out pretty good. Uh, <laughs> and you know, just a moment on Howard's mm -hmm. sense of humor. Very droll. Mm -hmm. Turned out pretty good. <laughs> it must have been that single wall construction. You yeah, grew up yeah, with. yeah. I, I believe it. <laughs> And so these things, the thing like the single wall construction, that was in the code before, wasn't it? Uh, no. 
Oh. We didn't have an energy code, a real energy code, until 1994, ah. by which time the production builders, the guy who's, guys who built a lot of the home, they were in double wall because the mainland does double wall. Ah, okay, yeah. okay. So this is really an improvement. This is really an And you're adapting it to the way yeah. things are in Hawaii. Yeah, we're dashing headlong into the 1950s. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, that sense it's of humor. Because it yeah. worked. <laughs> How about this? Instead of air conditioning, ceiling fan, jealousy windows. Yes, jealousy windows are allowed. And I'll, I'll describe the uh, amendment in a moment. Better go to the next slide here. So here, here's more in detail. You can have zero air conditioning in this home, or you can go up to 50%. You get credit for TVs on the roof. Fenestration means windows. You have very specific window, lots of window requirements. Lighting roofs. Uh, you know what? We're going to go through each of these. Why don't we go to that? Oh, there, there's an illustration down on the lower right. Uh -huh. That is a rural home on the Big Island, and that's the type of home that I have in mind. Yeah, this White is a very efficient home, roof. isn't yeah. it? Yeah, with the great big overhangs, otherwise known as lanai. Yeah. And there, there's a lanai photo there, too. It's interesting how far we've gotten from that when mm -hmm. that was really a great solution years mm -hmm. ago. Precisely. The, the old Hawaii style was very valuable. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm local. I, I grew up with this stuff. And any local person I talk to, it just, it just makes immediate sense. Now that's, that's how we should do it. Yeah, it's, ba it's back to the, the basics is what it Plus, is. Plus, it's healthier. Anybody who studies buildings knows that interior atmospheres in buildings are something like four to five times worse generally than the exterior air. So what we're doing is encouraging people to be in the nice fresh air. And of all the states in the Union, Hawaii has the cleanest air. Yeah, so we should focus on this. It's yeah. really an improvement yeah. in many ways. It's philosophically an improvement. How about the mm -hmm. next slide? Huh? Ventilation, you must have, if you're not going to air condition, you must have a lot of windows. Say if you have a 1,000 square feet of floor space, you must have 140 square feet of open vent area. Mm. And again, jealousy windows, even though they don't meet code because of something called air leakage, we say, yes, it does meet code. Because centrally air-conditioned homes in Hawaii with our beautiful climate, if it's nice and cool outside and Dad wants to reduce the energy bill, says, hey, see off. Jealousy is up, boom, you know, nice comfort with the trade winds blowing. Through. You know, it strikes me this is a really great paradigm for us. Too bad we didn't have this before, mm -hmm. but there are an awful lot of buildings that have been built with central air conditioning mm -hmm. that we are going to rue the day. It's going to be mm -hmm. so expensive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and such a waste of energy when you, all you have to do mm -hmm. is open it up a little. Yep. Yeah. So and speaking of which, can we open it up a little and get off that screen so Howard and I can talk to each other for a minute? Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Howard, how are we doing yeah. so far? We're a little behind schedule, but we're doing absolutely beautiful. You, you, could, uh, you could have written the code yourself. You know, for that. Well, I really admire this code, and I admire your work on it. This must be a great moment for you. It's a great moment for Howard, because it's something you've been working on for, what, 20 years more? Yeah. And uh, it's come to fruition, and, and it's, it's, it's a dream come true. And right now, we're going to have a, we're gonna have a break come true. Mm -hmm. We're going to have this one-minute <laughs> yeah. break. It's going to come true. Watch this. Bang! My name is Raya Salter, and I am the host of Power Up Hawaii, which you can see live at from 1 to 1.30 every Tuesday at thinktechhawaii.com and then later on YouTube. I am an energy attorney, clean energy advocate, and community outreach specialist. And on Power Up Hawaii, we come together to talk about how can Hawaii walk towards a clean, renewable, and just energy future. To do that, we talk to stakeholders all over the spectrum, from clean energy technology folks to community groups to politicians to regulators to the utility. So please join us Tuesdays at 1 o'clock for Power Up Hawaii. Okay,
that's the word of the day, Howard Wig. But it's not just Howard Wig, it's Howard Wig, an energy analyst at the State Energy Office here on Code Green, his show, I'm only visiting. And we're talking about the new energy, energy conservation code, a whole new ball game right here in Hawaii, and it sounds great. So Howard, you want to continue with your slides now? Yep, we're ready for the next slide. Okay, Boom. what do we got? Okay, part of the tropical code that I've been describing mandate a rough end, that means a wire for ceiling fans, and if people want the ceiling fans, there's a little plug up in the ceiling. Boom, take off the plug, hook up the wire, and boom, you've got your ceiling fans. Ceiling fans reduce our perceived body temperature by 5 degrees for slow and up to 12 degrees for fast in our beautiful climate. That's all we need. We don't need air conditioning. So this is an incentive. It has to be there in mm -hmm. what? The largest bedroom and the second largest, the largest other room in the house. All, all bedrooms in the next large room. Okay, yeah. and, and, and that means that when you move in, when you start furnishing the inside, mm -hmm. you already have the thing ready to go. All you got to yeah. do is plug Maybe in the fan. Or you can tell the builder, I want the ceiling fans in right now. Yeah. So you move in. But at the very yeah. least, he's got mm -hmm. to put the plugs in. Yeah. And so, and the result is that you don't have to spend a lot of money putting the plugs in later as an afterthought. Precisely, and doing all that wiring. Yeah, it's, expensive. It's just done when the electrician is up there doing all the other wiring. It's a great idea. Yeah. And perfect for Hawaii. Perfect, perfect. because we need yeah. a lot of fans. We don't need air conditioning. Absolutely. And that calls for the next slide, please. Okay. Oop. And lighting. Oops, we skipped one. Yeah. Th there's minimal lighting efficiency, and you measure efficiency or efficacy by lumens per watt. This is totally, totally outdated. LEDs are coming on like gangbusters. Look at that maximum, 60 lumens per watt. That's miles per gallon. Just read this morning that Sanyo came out with a lamp, 220 lumens per watt. Wow. Astounding. It's, it's, it's going so rapidly. And the next slide will illustrate that somewhat. The LEDs are pretty gosh darn complicated, as you, as you can see, but they are being made mass produced by the millions and millions and millions, no exaggeration, so that the cost has come down way, way down. And Hawaii Energy, which is a sponsor of ThinkTech, works with the retailers and reduces the cost further. I think you can go into a big box store and buy four of them for $10 or something like that. So they're really, really cheap. They last 50, 60,000 hours. They can be dim. They're rugged. Whole new world. Whole new world, yeah. So what, what does the code specifically provide that you must have energy efficient bulbs? 75% of your lamps must be energy efficient. In, in, a, in, a, in a home or a commercial property that you turn uh, over? In commercial property, it's 90%. Ah, because I, I won't go into the I mean, it's a good but, place yeah. to start mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that you're, you're not talking about you go in there with the old fashioned and then you have to change it all out. Very you nicely. you yeah. go in there with most of them set up as mm -hmm. as high efficiency yeah. to very at the very start. And in my unbiased opinion, any architect, engineer, builder would just do 100 percent now because where you used to want a different type of lamp was in, say, the dining room when you want to might want to dim the dining room to make a nice relaxed atmosphere. You can dim LEDs all day long and twice on Sunday, no problem whatsoever. They're dimmable. That's the thing. I think yeah. the early ones weren't so yeah. much dimmable, yeah. but now they're so high tech and, mm -hmm. and they're and so efficient, yeah. and all they're dimmable. You can do anything with them. Yeah, all the big companies are doing huge amounts of research on them, and so they're improving all the time. There were a number of uh, exhibits at, at, uh, at the Verge mm -hmm, Conference mm -hmm. by people who making uh, LEDs, including fluorescent, fluorescent bulbs well, that are they, LED. They huh? look like fluorescent, but they're, they're LED. Yeah, they I mean, look they, like they, fluorescent, they're, but they're, they're yeah, really LED. They're, they're, those are called lit linear lamps. And they're smart bulbs, too. they got <laughs> processing in them. Yeah, all kinds of controls. Speaking of which, we better move to the next slide. And there's a big section. Oh, oh, no, this is a different one. Instead of having wall insulation, you can either have reflective walls, that is, a, a coating on the wall is such that 
most of the sun's heat that breaks that wall is reflected back instead of traveling through, or you can shade that wall by a back outside eave. Yeah, a point three, meaning if you have a ten foot high wall, you must have an eave that goes out three feet. So you must do up. one or the other. One or the other, no. The reflective no coating or the shade, or both. You can do both. No, no both. harm in going nice. above code. Yeah, so that's really, that's, and this again, perfect for Hawaii, isn't it? And this is not just dreamed up by, well, it was dreamed up by me, but it's verified by some of the top mechanical engineers in, in the nation <laughs> in, in terms of performance. And it reminds me of that home you showed us, that old style home with, mm -hmm. the, with the lanai and the overhang yeah. over the lanai. Yeah. That, would, that would qualify. That absolutely <laughs> qualifies, yeah, because that's more like a 1.0 projection factor, 10 foot high roof, yeah. 10 feet out um, my little grass shack. Precisely, precisely. <laughs> which calls for the next page, please. And the, oh, this is something I helped push through at the national level. All of the warmer climate zones on the mainland, including us, must have, this is for commercial buildings now, reflective roof. Must. What, what is a reflective roof? It is a roof that reflects back the sun's heat back a minimum of 75%. So what is that, painted white or it's a special white. material? It can be. At 75, it can be a light color. That, that would suffice. White, white is, is the best, but that white has to be loaded with uh, titanium dioxide. And that gives you the reflective property yeah. on it. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things you said, I just want to dwell on this for a minute, you know, you're involved in a national conversation on these issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you go to these meetings, I presume they're all over the mainland or in Washington. Yeah. Yeah. And you come and say, my name is Howard Wig from the State Energy Office in Hawaii, mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell you guys what I think you should do. And they listen. Yeah. How about that potato? Whoa. That's pretty good, Howard. And I'm concept. sitting next to you when you're talking to me. <laughs> it's all good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I, I will drink to that. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, you yeah. should. You mm -hmm. should celebrate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hope you're celebrating on a I regular basis. So, yes, I am. <laughs> yep. Yep. So we better go to the next slide here. Uh, existing roofs, there are existing, yeah, roofs in this place. There's a whole new section in the new code for renovations, alterations, and so forth. And the when you're replacing a roof, this, the strike out, the struck out language is the mainland version, and I put that before the roofing association. They said, no, it's going to double the cost of re-roofing. So the roofers and I worked together and the alternate is down below the uh, underlined part. Energy Star compliant roofing that's reflective, radiant barrier, or continuous insulation, that's CI, or ventilation. And again, the roofer said, yep, that's what we do anyway. Put it in the code, and it adds virtually zero to the cost of yeah. the roofing. And, and that it's worth talking about that for a minute, too. I mean, if, if you were going to try to find somebody who was, would oppose some of these provisions, mm -hmm. there would be the developers and builders who mm -hmm. want to cut corners and do value engineering and not yep, spend yep. any money. Mm -hmm. um, but you didn't get a lot of resistance from them, did well, you? Well, in the, in the case I just uh, did, uh, there is a Hawaii Roofing Contractors Association. I presented the mainland language to them. And fortunately, they were my friends, so they didn't throw tomatoes at me or something. <laughs> but they said, they just shook their heads no. And I said, OK, let's sit down, let's talk. And that's what we came up with. That's great. So you have to negotiate this with the trades. Absolutely. Because they have their own you know, profit motives to protect. And they are members of the Building Industry Association, which politically is very, very powerful. Sure. Building Industry Association opposes You've won over, you've won the hearts and the minds of a lot of legislators, a lot of city council people. So, um, you know, it, I mean, it's just another kudo for the fact that you have to negotiate with these people. You have to deal with objections. You have to deal with, mm -hmm. you know, adverse interests. And you have mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. and your, your only interest is make it efficient, mm -hmm. save energy, save, become more mm -hmm. efficient, and, and get to our 40, uh, 45 percent, uh, our 2045, 100 percent goals. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, you know, it's interesting that anybody would, would oppose that, but it's understandable. Yeah. They, they, they've, they've got their own point of view. Well, so let's, uh, I know you have other slides. We don't have time for many more. Maybe we mm -hmm. have to do this again. Um, but I just want to close this show on, on sort of a, an inquiry about when it rolls in. I mean, 
what's mm -hmm. the when is the effective date? Uh, okay. How do we ramp up to do it? Is it being done right now? Uh, if I buy a house right now, will it comply, uh, or when? Okay, Governor Ige signed the administrative rule into law on August on March 20th. It took effect March 30th. There, and that affects all state buildings. And can consider that we have 265 public schools in this little state, and we have all the community colleges and the Manoa campus and the health facilities. Those are a heck of a lot of buildings, in addition to our downtown buildings. So all of those are immediately affected. The county guys, building managers, are very, very, very aware of this because they sit on the building code council. And this should, the governor signing should serve as a catalyst for the counties to adopt. And the counties, they're, they'll be getting notified, or their mayors will be getting notified that this is a very good thing to do. In fact, at the Verge conference, I saw the mayors of uh, Maui and Hawaii. And they, they know me from previous times. And they said, yep, 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 we got to do this. Does it apply to existing buildings? Do I have to go, does the state have to go and do retro work to no. get up to co this new code? Or, no, or it, is it only uh, apply going forward? It only applies to new construction or alterations or renovations. And I just saw this morning that the state in the nation doing the most renovation is Hawaii. Hmm. Can you so explain it, that? It, oh, it, uh, it, they surveyed people and they asked, will you be renovating your home this year? And 33% of everybody they surveyed in Hawaii said yes. The next state was... Don't say was Minnesota. Ver no, Vermont, I think. <laughs> and they said 26%. So we were head and shoulders above anybody else. We, we like to renovate. Mm -hmm. We don't like to build from scratch so much as we'd like to rent no, a not, not at $730,000, we don't like to build from scratch. <laughs> Speaking of which, I go back to the tropical code. That $730,000, if you build to the tropical code, goes out the window. Lord knows how much you're going to save, but it's a lot. Yeah, this is great. I, I, mm -hmm. I hope that people realize this is going to have a long-term effect. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a significant part of approaching 100% by 2045. And it's going to make life better. And mm -hmm. if you have to pay a few bucks more to a contractor, the developer, it's okay because you're going to have a much better home and a quality of life at home, and for that matter, in office buildings and state state properties in general. Yeah. Thank uh, you so much, Howard. A huge it's pleasure. Great. I, I hope you follow through on the rest of the slides at the next show. Yeah, yeah, I will <laughs> do that. I'll, I'll have uh, some a little guy doing being the guest. <laughs> he, he won't uh, verge off on discussion. Yeah. Thank you. Howard Wing, mm -hmm. uh, energy analyst for the State Energy Office uh, here on the new Energy Conservation Code, a new ball game. You'll, you'll see. You'll hear more about it. Aloha.